In this video we're going to take a look at some tips for passing a 3G TIG test. A few tips for how to prop, how to slide, how to glide, different ways to hold the torch. And of course some good arc shots on how to tie in to the end tack. And lots of other arc shots showing different cups on different material types, different joints, different situations. Alright, ready? Let's get into the 3G test. Just for this demo joint, I'm just using 304L stainless. That's, that would be rare to do in aerospace testing, but it's just a practice joint. The very first thing I would do when taking a test like this is wipe the, the metal down with acetone. Next, I would use a clean dedicated file to clean that sheared edge. Some metals require some sanding. This is just pretty clean with that had a peel coat on it. So I'm giving it another wipe with acetone and then I'm ready to weld. I'm going to be using purge gas on the fixture, so I need a dual flow meter here to make that work. When I make my weld tacks, I put just a little bit of extra metal on them. I have a slight gap in this joint, 040. By the time I get finished tacking, it's going to be more like 20 or 30 thousandths. And then when I start welding, that's even going to close up. Stainless draws a lot. I gapped it just mainly to help me see. I find that that helps also with a little less distortion when you're done if you have a little area for the weld metal to shrink. Totally not necessary to have a gap in this thickness to get full penetration. Notice that I'm reading out 46 amps here and I'm welding 063 material. I've found that with stainless you need about two-thirds of an amp per one thousandths of thickness for a butt joint like this, especially if you have any gap at all. That one amp per one thousandths rule is a guideline works on carbon steel and some other alloys but a little bit less for stainless a little bit more for aluminum here's a nice instructive arc shot right here welding into that tack on the very end of the joint now we're going to take a look at that at half speed here in just a second because I think there's something to be learned here this applies to welding to the end of practically anything uh, not just a 3G test We'll slow it down and blow it up a little bit. So this is half speed. I'm almost there. I'm keeping a real close eye on the front edge of the puddle. And right now it's joined into that tack. And so now heat is going to conduct a lot more evenly. And there it goes. It wicks right on up into the tack. And I start backing off the pedal and backing up a little bit. And that works for me when I'm welding on an end pretty much anything. So now I'm going to weld from the bottom into that previous weld. And this is just a little bit different technique, but I'm, I'm still going to taper off amperage as I blend the weld into that previous weld. This is called backstep welding. It's used a lot in sheet metal welding and in aerospace welding because distortion needs to be limited. And back, backstep welding can really help in limiting distortion. Here I've magnified it just a little bit and I'm coming in on the previous weld and this is where I kind of slow down a little bit. Let things melt together, let things blend in and then keep traveling while I taper off and kind of teardrop or comet trail off. And that has worked for me really well, especially on crack sensitive alloys. So we're going to take a look at that at half speed now. I'm almost there tying in. Now I'm slowing down a little bit. Make sure it has time to fully blend and penetrate. And then I add a little less filler until I'm not adding anymore as I keep traveling and slowly letting off the foot pedal. And I taper it down into a little teardrop of nothing. Continuing to travel while I let off gradually the foot pedal is the, is the secret there. All right, let's take a look at some ways to hold the torches. You saw me holding it another way, and that was mainly to get out of the way of the camera. Oftentimes, I'll hold the torch a very different way. I'm using a TIG finger here to glide along that fixture chill bar there. It kind of glides a little smoother than your glove can. It's not so much that you need any heat protection here unless you really have welded 100 joints and have really got that fixture hot. But it just helps you slide and glide along a lot smoother. So this is just an example of a previous video I did. I just really wanted to show how to hold the torch and I didn't have time to film that footage on the stainless video. So this is just the, the aluminum joint on how I held the torch and the same thing would apply to stainless.
So let's get back to the stainless topic. Okay, let's pull it out of the fixture, kind of check the back side, see how we did on penetration. Now I'm noticing I got one little spot that discolored more than the rest of it. I think that was because the plates that I used for shim plates were kind of bowed a little bit. See that little spot? That should be white. So I either need to adjust my argon flow on the fixture or possibly just get a good, a better mate on the chill bars. I'm pretty sure it was just the chill bars actually. I want to take a minute and show you some of the changes we've made to one of our most popular TIG kits. We're trying to add value without adding cost. It's the Weldmonger Furic Arsenal kit, a very popular kit. This one is showing the, the one for 17, 18, and 26 style torches. We also have them for 920 style torches. Let's take a quick look at the old version. It's Furic cups, starting with the 8 and going all the way up to the BBW, the 8, 10, to 12 ceramic, and the BBW. But what we've done is we've added a 4 through 8 standard ceramic cup to make this kit even more useful for most every situation. The large Furic cups are, are great for stainless, inconel, titanium, but sometimes you don't need all that gas and you don't want to use all that gas if it's a Sunday afternoon and the welding stores are closed. So we, we're, we got you covered here going all the way down to a number four cup. This 332nd Furic gas lens works with all these cups. So let's take a look at swapping out the normal hardware, the stuff that comes with most torches with the Furic Arsenal kit hardware. One benefit that you notice right away is it just shrinks the overall size of the torch. It just kind of makes it more maneuverable, makes it be able to reach into tighter spots. And the clear cup that comes with it, the number eight cup, really lights things up. I started using clear cups strictly to film. I was kind of skeptical, but I, I saw right away they really helped me see better. The number eight clear cup is good for AC and DC. This is a little plate with a bead on plate here with I've, I've scribed lines about an eighth of an inch apart just so you can see the detail. See how well this cup lights things up. It really helps. The Ceramic Jazzy 10 is a DC cup. Great for stainless steel, chromoly, carbon steel, tool steel, even some light titanium work. This is some 4130 chromoly and this is the second pass. I'm doing a little pedal pumping here. But another benefit of a cup like this is if you get a really good shielded first pass, the second pass just goes in a whole lot better. If you need a little bit more shielding with a little longer stick out, the Ceramic 12 is a good choice. Here's some stainless steel 120 wall tubing. With stainless steel, just a little tip, you want to get that puddle started quickly, get moving quickly to kind of outrun the heat. You don't always just want to weld with less amperage. Sometimes hotter and faster is better. The clear BBW is a great cup for titanium. The bigger the cup, generally speaking, the more gas flow it requires. And this one might require as much as 35 or 40 CFH, but when you're welding titanium, the little extra argon is just cost of doing business. It's, it's necessary. It comes with the long cap, the medium cap, and the short button cap. Now, where would you want to use these cups? Well, again, if it's a Sunday afternoon and you're, you're, your tank is down to about two or 300 and you've got a job you need to get out and it, the job doesn't really require super excellent shielding, a four or a five cup makes sense. It also makes sense for flash tacking. You don't waste a lot of gas while you're just doing a little, a little quick burst tack on some sheet metal corner joints. There's a purpose for every cup. You know, one size does not fit all. The number five cup is great for aluminum butt joints, can actually help with penetration by limiting that cleaning action and kind of focusing the energy on the puddle. Another reason to have a good assortment of cups is sometimes you might get into a situation like this where you're walking the cup on a small fillet weld. You don't want to use a whole bunch of extra gas. It doesn't require it. When you've got that cup right up, right up against the metal like that, it requires a little bit less gas flow than it does if you've got a long stick out and, and freehand in it. A number six is also a really good all-around cup for aluminum. This is an outside corner joint on eighth inch thick material. If you need a little longer stick out than you can get with the six, take it up to a number seven, just increase the argon flow. About two and a half CFH per cup size gets you right in the ballpark usually. 
And then there's the number eight, which is kind of a really good all-around cup for stainless sand, chromoly, and carbon steel. This little demonstration really shows the difference between the standard hardware that comes with a TIG torch as opposed to a stubby gas lens. I'm using the same long stick out here. It's a half inch stick out. I'm going to use the same stick out on all these cups. This is sped up 4x, but you can see it's just kind of squiggly. I'm losing shielding at that stick out at about 20 CFH. Not very good for stainless steel. Now here I'm using the same exact stick out with the same flow rate with a stubby gas lens. And it's like somebody flipped the switch on. Now all of a sudden it's cleaned up. Now if I put the Jazzy 10 on there with that secondary diffuser, I'm going to get a little bit better shielding. Not like night and day here, but it's still, it's even better. And if I went up to a number 12, it would improve a little bit more. It just depends on what you need and how much gas you want to use. Well, that is a quick rundown on our new improved Arsenal kit. Again, this is the kit for the 17, 18, 26 style. We also have one for 920 style torches. Same cups, just different mounting hardware. If you're still using the old hardware that came with your torch, you're going to notice a huge difference here on steel and stainless steels. If you want to get a closer look, just go to weldmonger.com. Go up to TIG Welding Accessories and then drop down and over here to Furic Arsenal Kits. And there they are for the 17, 18, 26 as well as for the 920. Once you open that page up, there's a few other images that kind of clear things up for you and show you what's inside the kit all the contents and inside the tray right there and then there's another piece of information here to help you make sure you're getting the right one for your torch and then all you got to do is add it to the cart